Hello, let us apply the concept of uh, canonical ensemble theory to the statistics of paramagnetism. Well, we know there are two approaches as we did previously for a system of N harmonic oscillators. We will do the same for paramagnetism also. We will first deal with the classical approach and then we will come to the quantum mechanical approach. So let us begin with the classical approach. In this particular case, let us consider N number of dipoles. Uh, within a specimen and uh, they are all localized uh, so they would be distinguishable while considering the partition function approach we can first of all consider the corresponding energy for each dipole to be equal to ei which is equal to mu i dot b okay so this would give us uh, the corresponding uh, partition function z1 for the single particle z1 or q1 whatever. partition function for one particle q1 which is basically equal to summation of e to the power minus or this is minus so minus of mu dot b where b is the magnetic field and mu is the corresponding magnetic moment then we can write this as which can be written as minus of mu i b cos theta so this would be equal to beta mu uh, b cos theta okay and uh, this is mu dot if mu be the magnetic moment for each particle then we can write this as mu b cos of theta i okay we can write this as theta i where theta is the angle between the ith dipole and the corresponding magnetic field we call it as mu i mu b cos theta i summation over i so now one can um, write the uh, considering it for all possible angles and all possible orientations we can just transform this to e to the power beta mu b cos theta and then um, sin theta d theta for all azimuthal angles and d phi so there would be a 0 to 2 pi for d phi and 0 to pi for theta so for phi one can get 2 pi and uh, 0 to pi so you can just do a substitution e to the power x okay and then this would be equal to cos theta so this would be minus of dx by beta mu b okay and uh, uh, this is from 0 so when cos theta is 0 then our for x is equal to beta mu b cos beta mu b okay cos theta so dx would be equal to minus of beta mu b sin theta d theta and the corresponding limit would be for <coughs> theta to be equal to 0 then it would be equal to plus of beta mu b and for this is minus of beta mu b so you can just write this to be 2 pi by beta mu b e to the power uh, beta mu b and minus of minus beta mu b okay 
which is nothing but 2 of sin hyperbolic so 4 pi sin of hyperbolic beta mu b okay and divided by beta mu b this is our partition function so for n particle and distinguishable particles q and beta can be written as q1 beta was this okay q and beta can be written as 4 pi sine hyperbolic beta mu beta by beta mu beta whole to the power beta mu b where b is the corresponding magnetic field this is the magnetic moment and this is the magnetic field as we know from the theory of magnetism that is known very well okay so the n particle partition function is given by 4 by this and the corresponding Helmholtz free energy is given by free energy is given by a is equal to minus kt ln qn beta okay so that is going to give us n kt okay minus of minus minus n kt ln of 4 pi sine of hyperbolic beta mu b divided by beta mu b and uh, if we want to really evaluate the corresponding magnetization then we need to know a establish a relation between the magnetization and the Helmholtz free energy how can we do that we know that the magnetization is equal to n into average value of mu cos theta this is the magnetic moment along the direction of the field you multiply it with the number of the such dipoles per unit volume then you get magnetization and what is the expression for this statistically now this is equal to mu cos theta e to the power beta mu cos theta b divided by the partition function as you remember beta mu b cos theta e to the power beta mu b cos theta and that can be written again as equal to n by beta del L B the magnetic field differentiation with respect to the magnetic field summation of e to the power beta mu B cos theta I think if you take the differentiation of this ln sorry there would be a log natural okay if you take a differentiation of this then this would come into the denominator and then again differentiation over beta mu b cos theta with respect to give us beta mu cos theta and this beta and that would cancel out and that is going to give this now what is this ln exponential beta mu cos theta ln of uh, exponential exponent ln of exponential beta mu is ln q1 beta so that is equal to we can say is a we know that a is equal to minus of kt ln q1 which is equal to minus of kt ln summation e to the power beta mu cos theta okay so this is nothing but uh, 
minus of a into beta so we can write this as equal to minus of del a by del b at constant n okay so this can be written as so this is the relation between if we know the corresponding uh, <coughs> Helmholtz free energy then if you differentiate the negative differentiation with respect to the magnetic field is going to give us so now we can find the value of the magnetization for this particular case okay so if one wants to calculate the magnetization as we have derived that is equal to minus of del a by del b the differentiation of the Helmholtz free energy with respect to the magnetic field at constant n and t so we have an expression for this and we can write a as equal to minus of n kt ln 4 pi so 4 pi is a constant term that can be taken out you can always write this term as minus of n kt ln 4 pi which is a constant term minus n kt and ln of this whole thing sin of hyperbolic beta mu b divide and minus of ln beta mu b okay beta mu b so if you differentiate this then minus of minus would give us plus so plus of n k t and uh, differentiation of this term ln of sine hyperbolic beta mu b minus ln of uh, beta mu b okay. and uh, this is going to give us n k t and uh, log so this is 1 by sine hyperbolic beta mu b beta mu b okay and cos hyperbolic beta mu b and the whole into differentiation so this would be beta mu similarly 1 by beta mu b into differentiation so beta mu so you have a factor beta mu to be coming out n k t beta mu and this is cot hyperbolic beta mu b minus 1 by beta mu b okay kt beta cancels out and we are left with n mu and we call this as l of x the Langevin function where lx is basically equal to cot hyperbolic x minus 1 by x okay and x is equal to beta mu b so this is the Langevin function this is called the Langevin function and we can draw a characteristic of the Langevin function which looks like this if you want to draw a Langevin function Lx versus x let's say x turns from 5 to 5 10 15 and so on and if this is 1 then it slowly approaches at for a very large value of x lx tends to 1 okay so we can have two different approximation the first one is now what is x x is equal to mu b by kt so uh, for the low temperature and the high magnetic field uh, one is the low temperature and the high magnetic field approximation and the other one so let us first consider the uh, low temperature uh, low temperature high magnetic field low temperature high 
magnetic field in such approximation where low temperature means this is very high axis so x is much much greater than 1 in that case the Langevin function tends to 1 and we can have the magnetization to be exactly equal to n mu the classical value which actually gives the number of such dipoles per unit volume multiplied by the magnetic moment that is the magnetization about the other approximation that is high temperature low field low magnetic field the other extreme in that case for x much much less than 1 this x less much much less than 1 in that case lx actually goes like x uh, sorry 1 by x okay 1 by x plus x by 3 minus x is cubed by something like 45 and so on so we would neglect those term and we would only keep the first two term then L lx sorry cot hyperbolic x goes like this hyperbolic x goes like this so we are left with lx to be equal to x by 3 which is equal to uh, mu b by thrice kt and in such a case our magnetization would go like n there was a mu and here also so n mu square b by thrice kt so which is equal to c by t this is the curie's law for paramagnetism so we have derived from the statistical ensemble canonical ensemble formalism the curie's law can be derivable curie's law where c is n mu square b by thrice k and one can even define the susceptibility as del m by del b which is equal to n mu square by thrice kt the magnetic susceptibility so we can have the curie's law derivable curie's law can be derived from this formalism in our next class we uh, we would see the quantum mechanical approach where the expression for the magnetic moment for the uh, the quantum mechanical expression for the magnetic moment would be utilized to further derive the expression for magnetization thank you